recording live from Glory Hole Studios in Chicago and beyond. This is Cognitive Dissonance. Every episode we blast anyone who gets in our way. We bring critical thinking, skepticism, and irreverence to any topic that makes the news, makes it big, or makes us mad. It's skeptical, it's political, and there are no more witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. We're done, We're done with done. witnesses. We're done. The Trump trial number first and probably maybe only. Yeah, I mean, if we get to maybe the, if only. we get to the election and yeah, you know, the, I don't know. I, Georgia seems like it might be okay. Might still run it. You think it might still run this year? Yeah, they 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 probably won't be able to. If if Trump wins, they won't be able to like do anything until he finally steps down. Right. So I you, you so you think that trial will actually commence I, this year? I don't I don't know that it'll it'll start before the election, but it might okay. start this year. God, that would be fascinating if it was happening like literally on election day. If like the trial itself was taking place in November. What's so interesting is Trump has to uh because he can't really travel too far away from court, at least he couldn't before. Right. They he had to like do campaign stops in places that are in New York and yeah. nobody in New York likes. Yeah, yes, it's like there and so, back places. Yeah. So he he <clears throat> decided to do a rally in the Bronx, but I guess the Bronx has this section that's above the Bronx that's like a more suburban type area. I don't know what okay. it's called. It's whatever. It's a New York thing. Sure, whatever. Yeah, right, but it's like a bigger, a uh, way bigger than the Bronx area where they're all going to come down from this, like whatever's north of the Bronx, where I guess it's more Republicans sure, to come right. down because they have to get other people from outside of the city who will vote because right. they never fill nobody, in anything. Yeah, nobody inside New York City yeah. is going. It's, it's, you're I, getting I a tell bunch a of like I gotta traitors tell <laughs> coming in a rat city. I got to tell a story. Tom and I are walking with Eli Bosnick and we're in New York and this is, this oh, is in 2015. Was. Trump announced and we're walking down the street and uh, we're talking about Trump and we're going back and forth, just sort of making fun of him and just bullshit, you know, just bullshitting. And I say, I, I should probably vote for him as a joke. And I, clearly yeah, right. I'm joking with the guys. <clears throat> and this woman who's walking behind us, totally dipping in our conversation goes, fuck you if you vote for Trump. <laughs> and, I, and then Eli immediately starts to apologize to her. Oh, no, no, he wouldn't vote. It's okay. And I was like, what the fuck are you apologizing to right. that person for? <laughs> like, who cares Jumping who that person Who cares who they are? Right. But he was immediately, no, 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 other New Yorker. I live here too. Right, yeah. <laughs> Nobody, we recognize yeah. one, they're yeah. from out of town. Yeah, they're from, they're from out of town. I think he even said that. I think it's like, no, they're from Chicago. <laughs> they don't, they don't, if they're from out of town. They don't yeah. know what they can't I say know, here. It's hilarious. It's so funny because Eli was just falling all over himself to apologize to this random random lady. Who it was just, so strange. Just jumped and I was like, that is so New York. Like, it's just so fucking, it's so quintessential New York. It is. I That town, I mean, it's it's rats, it's old leftover pizza, and it's like people and butting Donald into Trump. your- Donald Trump. Donald Trump and people butting into your conversations. That's a trash on the streets. Exactly. It's a great, America's first city. <laughs> Tom, before we get started, we got to talk about the Creator Accountability Network. We do, because we are credentialed, We're my credentials. Friend. We were actually the first people, I think... In the podcast network. In the podcast network to be credentialed, because we went through the training, two trainings, before I think anybody else did. I think so, too. Uh, and then we, this week, donated to, uh, to the Creator Accountability Network to help sustain the Creator Accountability Network, because it's going to be an ongoing thing. This was created... Uh, uh, middle of last year was when they started kicking around the idea, and this was a this was about what sort of happened in the atheist podcast sphere last year uh, when some creators took advantage of relationships with fans, and there was some grossness and some ickiness that happened with the atheist podcast community, and what really needed to happen was there needed to be a place where people could go to bring a grievance, and then to have people be trained on how to deal with members of their audience be having a grievance. Because yeah. the, the problem with what happened in our podcast community before was nobody knew how to handle anything. Yeah, nobody knew what to do. It, yeah. it like, I think we are, uh, we are creators. We are not like human resources experts. We are not like social workers. We yeah. are not psychologists. 
We don't know what the fuck we're doing. Yeah. We are uniquely unqualified, actually. Absolutely. To yeah. handle that kind of disclosure mm -hmm. and to do it in a way that's proper. And I think the, the great thing about the Creator Accountability Network is it takes that burden off of us who will do it wrong. Yeah, we'll just we do it wrong. We will just do it wrong. We'll just do it right? wrong. I will raise my hand. Yeah. I'll do it wrong. Yeah. I will do it with good intentions. Sure. But I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'd be making it up on the fly. Yeah. And that's not how people who have a legitimate reasons, grievance deserve to be treated. Sure. They deserve to be treated better than Tom made some shit up on yeah. the fly because right. he doesn't know what to do. Right. So we've joined here. Here's what I want to kind of lay out for you yeah. guys. Yes. We have joined the Creator Accountability Network. It's called CAN. CAN is a nonprofit dedicated to reducing harassment and abuse through ethical education and a system of restorative accountability. We joined because we care about the safety and well-being of our community members. If you feel our behavior or content has harmed someone, please report it to CAN, either via the reporting form on their website, which is creatoraccountabilitynetwork.org, or via their hotline. And that number is 617-249-249. 4255. They'll help us make it right and avoid repeating that mistake in the future. CAN also needs volunteers from our communities to help with their process. So if you have skills you think would be helpful or time and a desire to help, please visit their website to find out how you can volunteer. Most importantly, get the word out to other creators who you think would be interested in getting credentialed and help us build safer communities together. Yeah. So uh, if you're looking for any information, check the show notes for it. Uh, we're going to have a space on their website uh, so you can easily just, if you want to find anything more about our show or if you want to find out, if you want to talk to them about us, you can go right to Creator Accountability Network and do that. Cecil, I love this story. I love every single thing about this story and I'm going to have to read parts of this story. It's from NBC News. Rudy Giuliani is served indictment papers at his own birthday party after mocking Arizona Attorney General. Giuliani was indicted in April in connection with an alleged conspiracy to overturn the 2020 election results in Arizona. I hate, by the way, having to say alleged. I know, yeah. I hate it. He fucking did that. Yeah. That is what he did. Like 100%. That's like locked in. <laughs> okay, it's locked in. So, so this is great because... Giuliani was taunting, taunting Attorney General Chris Mays on social media for failing to deliver his indictment. He said, uh, and, and a thing, if Arizona authorities, and this is a post on X or Twitter, or whatever, if Arizona authorities on, can't find me. A now deleted post. Now deleted, way. a shame I think, post. I think that's the most important piece yes. of this story yes. is because after you find out all the pieces of this, you'll know why it's deleted. Uh. A fucking me. You know that when he deleted, he was fucking sweating motor oil. You know, just absolutely coming down. His, <laughs> that guy leaves the office with the cubes and he's just pouring shit down his face. Get this lady to eat these cubes. Get the soccer to eat these cubes. All right. So he said he's taunting authorities. He says, if Arizona authorities can't find me by tomorrow morning, one, they must dismiss the indictment. Two, they must concede they can't count votes. This was on Friday night that he posted this. And then he posted a picture of himself smiling with six other people and a bunch of balloons arranged behind him. An hour and 15 minutes later, this post goes up from the attorney general. Quote, the final defendant was served moments ago at Rudy Giuliani. Nobody is above the law. <laughs> he was served, you guys, at his own Fucking birthday At party. His own birthday party. And I wanna I wanna read. So Ted Good Ted Goodman, a spokesperson for Giuliani, said the mayor was unfazed by the decision to try to embarrass him during his 80th birthday party. He enjoyed an incredible evening with hundreds of people who love him from all walks of life. And we look forward to a full vindication soon. I it's not embarrassing. Nobody's trying to embarrass him. They've been trying to find him for weeks first, right. right? So if you were at the places where you said you'd be, they would have just fucking served you and nobody would have had to see it. Yeah. But instead they had to fucking track you down to where you would be publicly, where you told other people you would be publicly, where you invited hundreds of people to be where you would be publicly so they could fucking serve you yep. your papers. Yep. And it's not embarrassing. What's embarrassing is that he tried to overturn the election. <laughs> 
That's embarrassing. <laughs> What's embarrassing is when he tried to destroy American democracy. That's the embarrassing part. That's very embarrassing. Go fuck yourself, <laughs> you spokesperson for Randy Giuliani, you asshole. Also, like, I love how he tries to, like, flex big balls here. Like, oh, he's looking forward to his chance. He's looking forward to it so much he tried to hide from it. For, like, weeks. He's, Dude. like, he's like looking out his fucking mail slots. Yeah. <laughs> or, I'm not afraid of you. He's, I'm not telling you where I am, though. He's hiding in the vent between two motel fucking rooms. They gotta fucking throw a hook <laughs> over there and drag him out to feed him and then shove him back in there so he doesn't get fucking served. Are you kidding me? This is like picking a fight with somebody and then running away and then like once you're safe this being like, I'd have beat his ass. This is, I'd have beat his ass. This is three o'clock high, the fucking the indictment or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Rudy Giuliani, you also, asshole. Hey, spokesperson, he's not the mayor of anything. Yeah. <laughs> Motherfucker hasn't been the mayor of shit yeah. in 20 fucking years. Yeah, man. What do you, are, if you get elected mayor once, is that just like an honorific you get I forever? Guess, I guess you get to be mayor from that point on. That's why I think we still call him Mayor McCheese. <laughs> <laughs> He is still the mayor of McCheese. <laughs> McCheeseville? <laughs> Cheesy town? Cheese. <laughs> Who is going to unseat Mayor McCheese? I don't know. What is that election like? <laughs> what is that election like? Is there like an Arby's sandwich trying to like um, usurp the throne? Is from Grimace mayor the mayor's spokesperson? <laughs> Oh, oh, that fucking Robble Robble guy tries to steal the election. <laughs> tell me, tell me fucking Hamburglar doesn't look like Rudy Giuliani with a thing over his face. Tell me that's not true. He a hunter. We're calling it up. You, We're calling up the fucking Robble Robble Cecil, guy. I'm going to blow your mind. You've never seen them both in the same place at the same time. <laughs> That's true. We've never seen it. When was the last time you saw fucking Robble Robble <laughs> and Rudy Giuliani oh, in the same place uh, at the same time? I got to put it up there because there's a there's a probably maybe I know half his name our audience Robble Robble. has no idea who the fucking hamburger is. Oh, yeah, because they're fucking young pups. They don't know anything. They, they don't watch commercial television. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and we're going to see. We're going to look at this together. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to see it. It's the same. look like it's the same. Hold on. Here you go. Well, yeah, fucking hamburger ties his tie like Trump does. Fucking hangs like three inches below his dick. It really is long. Okay, here we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Open image in a new tab. And then we put it side by side. Okay, guys. Oh, my God. All right, guys. Here we go. Here we go. Are they the same person? Ian, Ian, I need you to color that fucking mask in on Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> They're the same person, They're the man. same person. They're the same person. Dude. That's why it took him so long to get served. <laughs> <laughs> He's like hiding a bag of fries and he's poking his fucking eyes up and then moving back down. Dude, the fucking oh. hamburger aged terribly. <laughs> Oh my God, Hamburglar. Like Hamburglar. If you don't know what we're laughing at, this used to be a mascot along with, they had like a four person group. It was Ronald McDonald, Grimace, Mayor McCheese, and the burglar. I can't, I don't think there's anybody else. Yeah. I think it was I, just a, that's right. It's like because a four I'm, person group. That's right. Who's the bassist? <laughs> <laughs> and do you remember, like, at some of the McDonald's back in the day, back in the 80s, I'm just leaving this up the they whole had show. these, like, play places outside where yeah. each of the, yeah. each of the entirely metal play sculptures <laughs> were shaped. <laughs> that were made to knock all your teeth out of your mouth. Yeah, and they would get, guys, so they were made, they were shaped, like the Grimace one was shaped like a weird purple jail made out of metal. Yeah. With bars you could get into. That was weird because that was Grimace, but Grimace was fat. Then they had like the 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 hamburger, the Mayor McCheese was like a tower thing. A that tower you thing up that into. you slid down, maybe. Yeah, he had yeah, his yeah. mouth, you slid out his mouth. But they were all made out of shiny fucking sheet metal. And in July, yeah. you basically, you could cook like a hamburger. Yeah, they, if they ran out of grill the space, they'd run outside. <laughs> really. like, nothing was as hot as the old school, like. Back in the 80s, they the sleds, the slides and shit, and like the toys and shit at parks were made out of like barely smooth sheet metal. 
Do you remember this? Yeah. You go on a slide and you would burn the fuck out of yourself. If you wore nylon, you would just stick because it yeah. would melt. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask a question? Why would they make Grimace the jail and not the, the camera? I don't know what they did. I thought that was so weird, but it's true. It's like, yeah, you know, yeah. like everybody played jail in that thing. It was the only thing to do. Somebody find these pictures and make us an image of Hamburglar as Rudy Giuliani. Come on, find this picture especially. That's a great picture. It's the first thing that came up when I Googled it. So have you ever seen, I'm sure you've seen this. So periodically, if you just drive around enough, you will see somebody's backyard that has at some point purchased one of the play place structures and no, put it in their kidding. backyard. I've seen a hand, I've seen maybe 20 of them in my life. Somebody, some McDonald's somewhere got rid of them because nobody uses them anymore. They were just intensely dangerous. Yeah, no, yeah. They and, probably make you sign a waiver when you for, buy yeah, it. For real. <laughs> and, so, and they these things all end up in somebody's backyard. And that person's backyard, it's always the same kind of person. It's a backyard that has like flattened beer cans all over the sure, garage yeah, yeah, yeah. and like signs and, and a shit. windmill made of beer cans yeah, that have been yeah, ripped yeah. open. Yeah, And sure. then in the backyard, they'll have like weird shit they got somehow. Yeah, and like, yeah. I can't, I've seen these repurposed McDonald's things. And I'm like, God, as a kid, as a kid, I can't imagine the joy if your dad came home with a fucking like, hey guys, I got, I got I, the fucking, I got the hamburger. burglar. <laughs> <laughs> My dad could beat me every day and Tom. I'd be like, he got me the hamburger. I love him. Tom, one day <laughs> you're going to be going down. You're going to see an estate sale with a mayor machine. buying it. And you're going to buy it. Buying and it. you're going to put it in your living room. <laughs> My living room, I'm going to put it in the bedroom. I'm going to put a mattress on that thing. I'm going to fuck inside of Hamburglar. There's just like a weird swing contraption attached to it. Oh, God. Amazing. Cash for gold, lady. Hey, fuck is your deal? Waving that sign. I'm convincingly trying to pretend that you are real. Beckoning to traffic, plying your charms, working your magic with those automated arms. All right, this story comes from The Independent. The headline, Cecil, and we mm -hmm. talked about headlines last week. The headline says, Trump appears to freeze for 30 seconds on stage during NRA speech. The subheadline is truer. Biden and Trump campaigns continue to trade barbs over accusations candidates are senile. So we watched this video and another video, actually, that's also underneath it. And I want to be very clear. He doesn't fucking freeze. No. Biden's uh, Biden wins tweeted out breaking Donald Trump glitched out and froze at his <clears throat> rally tonight. He is clearly unfit for office. Retweet every, retweet till every American knows he is senile. I want to play just a, a tiniest little piece of this so you can see. I'm not going to play the whole thing because I don't think it's, I mean, it's just, it essentially just goes on like this. Yeah, so it's unimportant. But I want to play uh, this piece for you. Nation in the history of the world. Okay, so if you're watching this, you just saw him pause when the music started. If you're listening to this, what you heard was him speaking and then music starting. What we have here is bad AV. Yep. Somebody didn't tell him that the music was going to start or the music's louder than it was going to be. He didn't know if he was going to talk over the music or not. He eventually, if we fast forward all the way to the end, he makes a decision. Now, he stays <coughs> silent most of the time. He's moving back and forth. You can sort of see in his head, he's thinking of maybe speaking, but I want to play the last piece of this so you could see him finally start to just decide to talk over the music. So... At the very end, he makes a decision to do it. But now we are a nation in decline. Gotta say this on you can also free info kits on gold IRAs. Oh my too god, I screen. know. I but, know. But genuinely, what you're seeing is Donald Trump not sure what the stage direction exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah. And he's you can see, you can hear too when he picks back up that what he's trying to do after that long pause where the music was playing, now the music is still going on, and I think he can sense, like, okay, it's gotten a little awkward, is he's trying to ride the moment through the music. He changes the cadence of his speech, mm -hmm. and he tries to, like, bring some, like, 
and now, and like ride into the mm -hmm. music, yeah. which I totally get that. Like having done a lot of public speaking, sometimes your AV goes weird and it does sort of like hold you up for a second. Then sure. you have to like figure out how sure. you're going to like punt in the moment. Yeah. Either you're going to, either you're going to make fun of the AV or you're going to talk about it, or you're going to be like, what is that music? Or you're going to just wait, not sure it's going to stop, continue, whatever. Yeah. And you're going to ride it out. And that's what he did. This, and look, I, I I hate everything about Donald Trump. 100%. I hate He's it. He's the fucking worst. I don't want to see him in power as the president or even in any, I don't want to see him as Mayor McCheese, okay? <laughs> I don't even want to see him. Unqualified. Mayor of McDonald's land. Don't, don't want to see it. He'd be the ham burglar. Burglar. <laughs> But I don't want to. I don't want to see him as as in charge of anything, right? I want to see him actually behind bars. I want, yeah, I want to see him pay for the crimes that he committed, which he committed several crimes. All that being said, this is not him being senile. This is no. him trying to figure out what's happening with the music. It's bad stage direction. That's it. This is genuinely a misinformation tweet. That's what it is. Mm. This headline is playing itself off as if it's saying, look at him glitch out. But what it's really saying when you read the byline is, the two campaigns are fighting. And we're going to tell you what the campaigns are saying. Whether or not there's any veracity to that doesn't matter to us. Absolutely. We're just going to tell you what they're saying. I want to play the other piece for you too for a second. This is Donald Trump. Uh, I, this is Now this is straight up. Biden HQ. This is Biden's official Twitter account. They say a feeble Trump nearly falls down on stage after he leans on his podium too hard and then goes on an angry rant <clears throat> calling his, the, his event workers crappy. Now, absolutely the last part. True, right? He does do that. Yeah. It's hardly an angry rant though. But it's, but it's, if you listen to it, he's just doing crowd work. So let me play this for, for everybody. This is Donald Trump. The first thing you're going to hear is him sort of lean on the podium. The podium's not like like actually on the ground. It's like one of the movable podiums, and he and it starts to turn a little bit, and he and he does lose his balance. But Americans are not struggling. You know, this is the worst platform. <laughs> Who put this stage up here? This is the worst. The freaking place is falling down. <laughs> I notice it keeps tilting further left. Like too many other things. What a crappy contractor this was. So I'm, I hate this man, but it's those are good jokes. As, the thing is, like, is like, just legitimately like well it's played. like it's like well done. Yeah. It's like what it is is it's just good crowd work. He noticed something was wrong. He had a, a slightly embarrassing moment. Yep. He had a way to deflect it. Now, do I think it's it's good to call out people who, you know, probably don't make a lot of money and have to set up these no, no, fucking, no, 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 of course yeah, not. No, I don't think shit. that's good at all. Yeah. And I don't think that that's good comedy in that sense. But the the, the leans to the left, that's a, that's a good joke. It's a funny yeah. on the moment joke. Yeah. That's not him being doddering. No, <clears throat> nothing about him was enfeebled. He like, he barely lost his balance really at all. And he lost his balance because clearly the podium, which he moved very easily afterwards, like to like remove in a position, was not bolted to the stage. Yeah. It wasn't, it was not clearly very heavy. He leaned on it. I would have, I could see myself doing the same thing. I don't like this guy. Like I'm not, like not, I'm, you guys know, we are the furthest from Trump apologists. Like he's a fucking horrible human being. But this kind of bullshit is wrong. And when the left does it, it's wrong. When the right does it, it's wrong. Misinformation hurts all of us. When the independent fucking reports it with a clickbait bullshit liars headline, it's wrong. This is doing us all a disservice. I think, you know, the Biden HQ one, the last piece of it, if they're going to be, we're workers' rights, cool. I'm with you, right? I'll be, I'll, I'll play with you with that. But if you're going to make a statement about him being, you know, like what did they say? I want to I want to read it again just so we can we can we can put in context the entire tweet. They say a feeble Trump nearly falls on stage. Both those things are, Did are, are, are didn't happen. After he leans on the podium too hard and then goes on an angry rant. Again, doesn't feel like an angry rant. I'll allow it because that's just interpretation, but then saying calling the event workers crappy. Like 
get a better editor and leave it at the last piece, right? Don't call the people who help set up the thing crappy. That's shitty of you, Donald. Yeah. Say something like that, perfectly fine. I'm on board with you. You say something like this, you're trying to make it seem like he's not he's not <clears throat> worthy of the office because of his physical limitations and his mental limitations. Yeah. Stop it. It's super Quit fucking- Quit it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Quit it because you know what? You're not going to convince anybody. What that might do is embolden people. Yeah, if I was anybody, anybody with a fucking brain in their head, I would be like, oh shit. I would click on it, watch it, and be like, that's not what happened. Yeah. Now you look like a liar because you lied. That's the reason Biden HQ in this moment, you look like a fucking liar because that's a liar's tweet. Do you remember that jackass that we watched, a diddly guy or whatever, diddly, whatever the fuck yeah, his uh -huh. name is? Yeah. Diddler. That guy on fucking YouTube who said, he basically looked at the audience and he said, I don't care if it's a lie. I'll make up anything. I just don't want the other side to win. So yeah. I'll make anything up and put it up there. Don't fucking sink down to that level. There's plenty of shit you could talk about Donald Trump saying. Yeah. There's plenty of things, right? We're going to talk about some things later where some of his editors fucked up royally, right? Yeah. Some of the editors that do, that do the work for him fucked up royally. That's some shit you can call out. He says insane things yeah. all the time. He meanders and rambles and makes no sense. There are so many legitimate moments Absolutely. to go on the attack. So choosing illegitimate moments to go on attack, this is Trump stuff. This is what Trump does. This is the world we're trying to move away from. I Let's not go into his world and sling mud with this fucking guy who we all have said, fuck, this guy ruined American politics. Let's not get in there and be like, well, if it's ruined, I'm I'm playing too. Then it must be that, yeah, this yeah. is the if this is the new rules, then that's what I'm doing. Right. I want I want to say too, it, it also feels like Biden HQ is saying we're weak on the older part. We're weak on the senile part. 100 percent And we've got to now project onto them that that's where that's he's yeah. the same or he's he's worse mm -hmm. and you're like dude you look weaker if you, you look, do that you look weaker if you yep. do that you look weaker and you also lend credibility that this is a legitimate criticism we should all be paying attention to absolutely okay well that's interesting you know why why because stories from the new york times trump opens door to birth control restrictions then tries to close it so I've got to read what he fucking said because, you know, we were just talking about Trump a second ago and he just, I just, I'm going to read word for word. And this is what you put, right? This is what you tweet. This at. is because this is not only incredibly damning in terms of a policy position, but also he legitimately sounds like an unhinged dipshit. He sounds like a guy who does not know what is happening in the moment. Completely inarticulate. When asked if he supported, quote, restrictions on a person's right to contraception, in an interview with KDKA, a CBS affiliate in Pittsburgh, Mr. Trump gave a vague answer. Quote, we're looking at that, and I'm going to have a policy on that very shortly. And I think it's something that you'll find interesting. And it's another issue that's very interesting. But you will find it, I think, very smart. I think it's a smart decision. See, so what the fucking shit does that mean? I'm reading it again. It doesn't mean anything, man. I'm reading it again. We're looking at that, and I'm going to have a policy on that very shortly. Okay, and I stop there. Yeah, that means you don't know you don't know anything about yeah. it, and they literally blindsided you because your brain is the size of a fucking teacup, yeah. and you can't can, you can't keep all that information in there, so you have no idea what you're going to say later. And it also means, and we we know this, it also means that he is unwilling to say, "Oh, of course, people have a right to contraception." The easiest answer, or or. Of course, people don't have a right to contraception. Right. He does not want, this. we talked about this before, he wants to own both sides of the position for as long as possible so he can sense the wind. Yep. That's all this fucking guy does, right? So, but what he says, and, he, and he's gotten away with this for an entire career. He might become president a second time. This answer makes no sense. We're looking at that, and I'm going to have a policy on that very shortly, and I think it's something that you'll find interesting, and it's another issue that's very interesting, but you will find it, I think, very smart. I think it's a smart decision. I that last bit doesn't mean anything. It's just gibberish. It doesn't it's mean anything. honest gibberish. It's just him saying, you'll find what I'm going to say in the future because I have nothing to say about it now. Interesting. That is, I read that, and I- And I'm, I think you'll find it very interesting, and I think you'll find it smart. I think you'll so find smart. it very smart. This is a guy who is genuinely an inarticulate asshole. Mm -hmm. In sure. any other context, if he was your third grade teacher, 
you'd be like, this is unacceptable. You cannot speak with the clarity required to teach third grade. They asked him, they pressed him on whether the whether his answer suggested he might support restrictions. He said, you know, things really do have a lot to do with the states. And some states are going to have it a, a different policy than others. Well, it, you're going to leave contraception up, up to, to the, the states. states? That's what you're going to do? Yeah. I, I, this is what? Monstrous. 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 He's... Like, first of all, just say it. Just fucking come out and say it. But he doesn't. It's all weasel shit. It's all between the lines weasel shit. Because the other thing that sucks about the way that he speaks is it's not like somebody can come out and say, hey, you said you were going to turn contraception over to the states. He can say, no, I didn't. What I said was, things really have a lot to do with the states. It's all this fucking backhanded wiggly it, shit. Even if he said it, he would deny it. He would. He would just say he didn't say He would say just it. say he didn't say it. He would literally just say he didn't even say it. Even if, even if he was presented with a tape of him saying it. Explicitly said it. Even if and he they had show him the transcript and then they play it for him, right. he would still say, I didn't say it. That's doctor. That's deep state doctoring a video. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Guys, we, like the right to contraception? Holy fuck. The right to contraception. If you don't believe that all of this is absolutely a specific strategy for the patriarchal powers that be to 100% as, as much as they possibly can in every possible way to disempower and disenfranchise women, then you are absolutely, you've got your head up your ass. That's what this is about. Yeah. This has nothing to do with a an ideology or a religious stance. This is 100% a way to control women. Nothing else. That's what this is about. That's what these men want to do. They want to own women's bodies. When we look at an election, we often look at an election as if we're going to vote in this election for this guy or this guy. And what we often forget, and this is what happened in 2016, is that when we vote for this guy or this guy, those people have an immense amount of power about the future, not just now, not just this four years, not just what they can do right now. But when they appoint people to the Supreme Court, they have an immense amount of power on the future of this nation, a generational power. Yeah. And that can happen in windows in our government, right? Because they normally appoint these people and they have what, a, like a like a 30 year shelf life, something like that, that they put on. And so as time goes on, these people start to get older and older. For instance, in their 70s, there's two people on the right that are in their 70s, uh, Thomas and I think it's Alito. I think they're both in their 70s at this point. There's some younger people on the, on, you know, you're talking about Gorsuch, who I think is Mike, like late 50s, early 60s. And then you have Kavanaugh and, and, Barrett. and Barrett who are in their 40s. Yeah. So you have people who are really young who have 30 years ahead of them, probably 30 years ahead of them, 25 years ahead of them. But then you have some people who are older. Donald Trump gets elected. Make no mistake about it. He's going to replace the people that, that are on that, that are in their 70s, with 45-year-olds. Mm -hmm. He will have yep. then selected five members of the, of the Supreme Court by one president. Over a span of 12 years, he would have selected, selected five members of the Supreme Court, and those people will have 30-year lifespans on the court. You're talking about generational change yeah, in our country. Yeah, yeah. You're not just voting for Donald Trump. You're not just voting for Joe Biden. You're voting for the future of the country because 70 years old is pretty old. Yeah, man. That's that's getting up there. And, you know, there's a possibility they might not retire if, the, if Biden gets elected. They might not retire in four years. But if things are looking up on the up and up, and there's nobody there to run in that's going to look like they're going to run against by uh, the the Democrat and win because it won't be Biden. It'll be right. Harris or somebody else. What's going to happen? Then now you're looking at eight more years for somebody like, uh, like Thomas. Yeah, who's been on the on the court for a very long, very long time, time since the '90s, right? Yeah, that's a guy who's been on the court for a really long time. So you're not just voting for this guy or that guy. You're voting for the future. And in and and you cannot get it more specific than what's hap what's going to happen in the Supreme Court in the next ten years. And, and not to mention all the federal court appointments. Absolutely, <clears throat> they make incredibly impactful decisions, like wildly impactful decisions. Not all the and the president appoints 
an enormous amount of judges over the course of their tenure. And those judges steer the ship. They are the current of the water. They steer the ship. I have, I have an idea, Cecil, for unrelated to anything we were just talking about, just an idea, just occurred to me. Um, we should start a send baked goods, like butter-based baked oh, goods yeah, yeah, yeah. to our right-leaning friends on the Supreme Court. <laughs> Like a lot of them. Like, yeah. Lard-based, yeah, butter-based, sure. baked goods. Delicious, tasty treats. Yeah. With no, just with just delicious, copious amounts of layered butter. I'm talking like laminated doughs. Sure. Delicious, flaky pastries. The kind of like pastries that your heart just cries out for. You know, where your heart is just like in love with the delicious, Absolutely. delicious, heart, thick, gooey butter. Heart-shaped. Chocolate filled croissants. Yes. Yeah. So you know like what that. I'm talking I know what about. You're saying, yeah. As a way to show our appreciation. Our, our love. Our, our just appreciation. Our, love. Our, our, love. our delicious, yeah. gooey, cholesterol laden appreciation. Actually, you really just want to lean as hard as you can into the shortenings because that's there like you that's go. a trans fat. And it the reason why I, the reason why I say that is because of the lift on it, the way you get I'm not I'm, yeah, that's the as a baker, yeah. mm -hmm. you get a nice puff. Yeah, I mean, it's just like the, um, the amount of leavening that you get from that. Outstanding Amazing. idea. Amazing. Outstanding. Guys, we should have a baked goods drive. A lard and shortening based baked goods drive. I want that lady from, <clears throat> from the help to bake a pie for him. <laughs> Who was the racist Southern she lady like, who made everything with butter she like on the food shits network? in a pie in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Who was, the, who was the Southern racist butter lady on the food oh, network? Oh, uh, Paula Dean. Paula Dean. Yeah. We should get Paula Dean. They'd love some Paula Dean in there. For real. Yeah, man. Just bake a butter we pie or whatever. make her with Supreme Court justice. <laughs> yes. She Send comes him. in every day. <laughs> oh, I got some cookies for y'all. <laughs> What do you mean? I could, if I wanted, have sexual intercourse with you. Oh, yes, Harry. And by wearing a rubber sheath over my old fella, I could ensure that when I came off, you would not be impregnated. Oh. That's what being a Protestant's all about. So in response uh, from the New York Times, Chuck Schumer plans a vote on contraception access, teeing up a campaign issue. Now, here's the thing. This vote will not go anywhere intentionally. Right. So it this is, is a show more. vote. They need to do more of these. Yeah. They need to. They're, so what they're doing is they're saying, okay, hey, everybody, let's put contraception, the right to contraception up. And the Republicans will block it. it will, they will not allow this to go forward. And they will now all have to be on the fucking record as saying, I am unwilling to support the right to contraception. And like, this means you won't be able to buy fucking rubbers. Yeah, right. Man. This is that like. They, they, a couple of interesting things are going to happen if, even if you're just like a misogynist. Like, let's say you're just the world's shittiest misogynist. Sure. You're Andrew Tate. You're Andrew Tate. Let's yeah. show, I, that's a way. That's a better shorthand. Yeah. Let's say you're Andrew Tate, and you're not in a Romanian jail. Yeah. You're here in you're here in like America, and obviously you'd be in the South. Yeah, of right? course. So, yeah. Sure. Okay. So you're down in some fucking trash state in the South, and they pass a couple of different laws. Right. One of the laws they pass is this like fetal personhood bullshit. And like, let's say it's like, I think it may be Tennessee that says, okay, well, we can start making you pay child support at, con at, 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 at conception. Okay. And then at the same time, they create a law that says, oh, and also contraception. Nobody has a right to contraception anymore, except for, you know, maybe they'll carve something out for married couples or whatever. There's going to be a lot of dudes paying fucking child support for a lot of babies. This is just going to be something that happens. There's going to be a lot of dudes that don't want to fucking pay child support for a lot of babies, Cecil. Yeah, man. That shit's expensive. They, they, they want to do this so that they can get more women off the workforce. Yes. They want to do this yes. because this is stacking the deck to get... Because if you take away abortion access and then you take away contraception... You're uh, you're basically stacking the deck to get more and more and more babies. You're getting yep. more babies. And... The people who have to stay out of the workforce for nine months, or not that long, but, you know, a couple months at least, at the very least, a yep. couple months probably. <clears throat> I guess maybe even not, now that I think about it. I said that, and I I, I don't believe it. I think that there's probably people who, like... There are, there are women who, because they can't afford to, they go back to work very almost quickly. immediately. And, yeah. they, and they stay work 
mm-hmm. almost the whole time. So I said that, and I I realized it wasn't true. But a lot as of I said it. But if won't if, be able if to. people if people did, it, there's also people who sometimes get called for bed rest too. You know, and that yeah. sort of thing. Well, also and then like the other the, thing. The other thing is, is like health, like childcare isn't free. Right. We don't just like they're they're not it's not like they're gonna be like no contraception, but it's free health care, free child care for all kids. Right. They're not saying that. They're saying no contraception. Well, you fucked it. deal with it. And then you gotta think, well, I had several ways to deal with it before that you just took away. I don't have access to abortion. I don't have access to the uh uh not the not even the day after pill. I don't even have access to the birth control pill. Right. Yeah, you have you have no access to any sort of contraception. You have no access to birth control. Child care, like child care average rates are over a thousand dollars a month for a single kid. Often, often this it's is not crazy. even often it's not even worth it for people to 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 do child care. They just stay home. And that's and that and that's the problem, right? Is that then that pulls women out of the workforce during their their prime earning years when they're building careers. And then they have this huge gap in a resume. Their skills and experience are, are, are lapsed. They always and it lag. makes it yeah. very hard for them to re-enter the workforce. And they're always chasing, right? They're always chasing. Many people don't have family to act as child care help. This is a, there, there are massive economic, terrible, devastating economic consequences to living in a society where we don't have any paid maternal leave, no paid FMLA of any kind, not day, not one hour of paid FMLA leave protected by law in this country. No child support help of any kind whatsoever in Sconston law. Contraception bans potentially on the rise. Uh, abortion bans. Like th- this is a this is a fucking complete nightmare. And I've said this before, but like if all this stuff passes, if I'm if I'm a woman in these states. I just wouldn't be fucking people. Yeah. I mean, and I know that's horrible, but like it's too dangerous. It would be too dangerous to have sex with men in a, in an environment where your rights are at this kind of risk. Sure. If I, if I was a woman, I'd probably try to do something that would be an ir- irreversible way to not have children. Right. Yeah. You'd you go know? to another state and get, get sterilized. Yeah. Get sterilized in some way because yeah. it's, it's the only way to do it is to, to avoid it completely. We got a call this week and the problem is, is that the call cuts off like right in the middle and then like kind of picks up a little bit later on. So I can't play it for you. And it's pretty long, but there was a person in Europe who called us after a show we did. We recently did a show where we talked about people who regretted having children. Mm-hmm. So it's a midweek show. Uh, it was a really interesting conversation we had about some articles that Tom had read. And there it was, a, it was an interesting conversation, but he said in this call, he said, look, this is a problem for the United States. You guys are listing all kinds of problems with having children, all the difficulties of having children. Most of that stuff is not a thing here. I live in Europe. I We get tons of time off. Healthcare or childcare is almost, it's, it's super cheap every right. month. I don't make a lot of money and I'm able to afford it. No problem. I We live in walkable cities where we meet other people and we have these groups of people who support each other. And, you know, it, it's just it, immensely different. Right. Immensely different feeling than the United States, right? Immensely different because in other countries, <clears throat> they want their, their th- they want the people who want to have children have children. In our country, we want to force you to have children. And we live in a culture that is toxically independent. Yeah. We are, we, we live in a culture that fetishizes the idea of personal and familial independence to a degree that is wildly unhealthy and completely out of step with the rest of the world. Just completely. We have no strong social, national uh, sense of community whatsoever. We are not a communal kind of nation. We are very much an individualist sure. nation. Yeah. And that that idea extends all the way down into our families. Our families are little silos, these mm-hmm. little nuclear family silos. We don't even have a lot of extended family help. We don't live in multi-generational yeah. homes. We don't build our homes next to our other, like next to our parents and stuff. That's very atypical here in the United States. A lot of people move away. We are very, very, very siloed because we have this toxic independent culture, toxically independent culture. It's it's to all of our disadvantage. And it's reflected like in our tax code. It's reflected in the way we build our families. And the, the price that we pay is when it comes time to have family or to, you know, try to take any kind of a risk, there's essentially no safety net. Everything is like, 
this ultra zero sum high stakes bullshit. It's horrible. Yeah. Marco. Hola. Marco. Hola. Marco. Hola. Marco. The story comes from the CDC. Hamilton child under five dies of measles. Did you say CDC or CBC? I don't know what I said. <laughs> this comes from the CBC, not the CDC. Let's stay right now that Tom and I think that if you, you should vaccine your children with the MMR vaccine, because if not, they can have serious complications. And I'm saying that to you, YouTube algorithm, yes. because that's something we believe in that you seem to miss all the time when we talk about we this on our show. We aggressively believe in the science of vaccination. Aggressively. Yes to vaccines. Yeah. Not no to it, but yes. Yeah. Yes, yes to vaccines. vaccines. Yes, vaccines. And this Hamilton child who dies under five, unvaccinated, there, there was only a few cases of this popping up because- in Canada, they feel like there's a good enough coverage and some, like some people slip through the cracks. But make no mistake, measles is on the rise in the world, period. It's on the rise in the world itself. And it's going to be on the rise in the States just as soon. It's already on the rise here, but you're going to see people die of this. You don't we don't talk about how people die from measles very often. Everybody's like, oh, it's just measles, just the measles, just the measles. Say that to that person's parent, or that, yeah. that parent of that, that kid. Yep. Say that to them. You know, it's just the measles. It's not, that's not just the measles. The measles can kill your child. Yeah. The, we, there is a big vaccines. We've talked about this before, but vaccines are the victim of their own success. Yeah. They are so fucking effective. So effective that we have allowed ourselves to forget the horrors and scourge of these terrible diseases that for millennia or centuries ran rampant through the human population, killing and blinding and maiming and sterilizing people as they went um, and disfiguring people as they went. We have not had to deal with that, not because these diseases have gotten better, but because vaccines have made us not have to deal with this shit. And because we are so fucking stupid and we've, we've like slandered our own good actions and goodwill and like scientific knowledge. We have slandered that with such great effect that we have now come to a place where we're turning the clock back against the very progress we worked so hard to make. And people are dying and people will go blind and people will be disfigured and people will be maimed and people will like be Just unable to Just go through a walk. shitty couple of weeks too. Yes, right. For no reason. There's also a growing and more substantial body of evidence that many people suffer from post-viral syndromes that are the uh, effect of having gotten something. They think they get something, they get over it, and then years later, some shit triggers or re-triggers a post-viral syndrome. Long COVID is potentially an example sure. of that, Shingles right? is that. Shingles is that. ME-CFS is one of those things as well. Like these are often, these are, we're, we're coming to a, a, a better understanding that Here's a news flash. It's better to not get sick. Yeah. I want to say this too. You can see video of an entire nation walking into vaccination centers rolling up its sleeves yeah, man. to get vaccinated for polio, to get vaccinated for the measles. You can see this. We have tape of it. There's yeah. tape of an entire nation realizing that it was way, way, way better to not get sick and to take a vaccine than it was to get sick or just roll the dice with polio or roll the dice with measles. That's what the March of Dimes was. The March of Dimes, when, when polio was so scary to people, polio was so frightening, that the polio vaccine, people were fucking elated. They were like beating doors down. The March of Dimes was people literally mailing in dimes it, to fund the creation and distribution of the polio vaccine, which was leaving kids you know, dead mm -hmm. or or maimed or in, in iron lungs for the rest of their lives. It was just, it was a terrible, terrible disease. It's coming back. There's polio is coming. Polio is something that in my lifetime, we really thought like the Rotary Club International, they were designed to eliminate polio worldwide. They got so close and they have let all, a lot of that progress has slipped out of their grasp because of our inability to vaccinate and our lack of desire to vaccinate. This is so stupid. 
These preventable fucking problems are so mind-bogglingly stupid. They make me crazy, Cecil. Yeah. They it's, make me crazy. It's 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 having to deal with this in a way that you can be flipping about. Yeah. But there's there will be a future that you can't be flipping about. You know, we we had to deal with this COVID, right? That was something you shouldn't have been flipping about. There's a lot of people who probably were flipping about it. Yeah. They, uh, a they, lot of them are dead. Some of those people paid a price, the ultimate <clears throat> price, right? They died because they didn't get, they, they didn't think there was anything to the vaccine. You, we saw it in real time. Yep. And what happened was the ex for several, like millions of people, the exact opposite. Yeah. They saw the exact opposite message. They saw it and they thought to themselves, wow, that vaccine looks scary. It's, it's the, the way that our government officials and the technocratic oligarchs that run this country allowed the messaging around vaccination through coronavirus to become bastardized and reversed will have set back vaccination for all disease. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how long, but certainly years there will be dead. There will be dead children that live that are in the wake of this. Joseph Sincavage started flying some new flags on his Stratford house this week. The U.S. flag, probably obvious reasons. Yeah, it's the, uh, the, the country's flag, obviously, yeah. And the Nazi flag. There's a couple of stories here, uh, see. So the first one from Salon. Out of control, legal experts say Justice Alito's stop the steal symbol is a huge red flag. Ha <laughs> ha uh, ha. What Never happened was flag. is uh, Alito's, Alito's wife, yeah, supposedly, supposedly. Uh, they were having a feud with a neighbor. Uh, the neighbor, I think, had a fuck Trump sign. Nobody tells you what sign they had, but it supposedly was a a, a sign that degraded Trump and was profane. So my thought is it's a fuck Trump sign. Sure, yeah. I don't know what it was. I, I read that it was like F asterisk 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 Trump. So I think it is. Yeah, I think it, uh, there's, I, I saw something like that too, but I saw it in a paper and thought maybe they couldn't write fuck. Yeah. So that might be too. I don't know, but in any case- they had, they thought it was filthy. And so what they did was, now this is, this. there's a picture taken of Alito's house on January 17th of an upside down American flag. Now the upside down American flag means a nation in distress. Uh, and it, 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 or not a nation. It, it really means like a ship in distress. It's made for like shipping when people were like, right. had fucking boats and they would say, oh, that flag's upside down. Oh, they, they need help. And so that they would go up and help the, the ship. It was co-opted by the Vietnam movement. Uh, I talk about this on the other show. I do Lawful Assembly. We just covered this and talked very extensively about Alito. Um, but we also talked about this particular thing with, with and, and how the Vietnam War protesters co-opted this. And then it became sort of a symbol of sort of anti-American symbol. And then the January 6th people, the, the, the Stop the Steal people stole it and used it as a way to say, stop the steal. That right. it was a stop the steal sign. <clears throat> well, it was in his yard after January 6th, 11, 11 or yeah, 11 days after January 6th, it was, it was photographed in his yard. And there's another story where there's a beach house where they have an appeal to heaven flag, which well, is a, which is a, like a, 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 another flag that is also like a far Christian right flag that was also involved in the, in the attack of the Capitol. Yeah. I, I, I want to also say, because it bears noting, I think, that his his contention, his defense was, oh, my wife had beef with a neighbor like you described. And so my wife put this sign up. That's not a defense. And here's why it's not a defense. The, the justice and his family are all under no illusions that they are not to be politically partisan. So reacting at all to a fuck Trump is partisan. Reacting in any way, it doesn't matter what the, it like, even if you knocked on the door of your neighbor and was like, hey, take that fucking sign off your lawn. That's a political, politically partisan moment. Like all his job to do is to see that and drive fucking past it and not say boo to fucking anybody. That's it. Because if he sees fuck Trump on somebody's lawn and he's enraged and he's incensed by that and he feels the need to respond in a public way with some other symbol, that's a partisan activity that is like, it's just like, it, it, 
Even if he read a, 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 there's nothing that he could do in response to fuck Trump that is not partisan. Literally nothing. I think, imagine that this was a Trump sign instead. Imagine if it was a Trump flag. Yeah. Right? Imagine that. Isn't it? Isn't it kind of? I mean, it feels like it is. They're trying to make it out as if it's it's it was it's not about the stop the steal stuff. It was just a, a way to react to the neighbor to say, uh, I don't know, I disapprove. That's sort of what they said. But then that doesn't explain on their vacation house another another right. flag that is used by the same group of people who were assaulting the Capitol, right? The one thing that that is the worst part about this whole thing is like Jenny Thomas is uh, Clarence Thomas's wife, and she's part of she's texting Mark Meadows throughout this whole process yeah. while that this is all going on. Even after the January sixth thing happened, uh, you got now it comes out that Alito's wife is also part of this. If she is, I don't know. Sure. Could be yeah. him. We don't know. Right. But let's make a presumption that these two families. They're so deep in what's happening with Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I aren't these supposed to be really smart people? Right. I mean, like, listen to these people talk. If he, I haven't had an I, I haven't had an opportunity to ever really listen to him until I started this other podcast, Lawful Assembly. Now I, I listen to on occasion, I'll listen to arguments at the mm -hmm. Supreme Court. And I'm always impressed with how smart and articulate and 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 to the point and being able to remember so many things and having such a deep knowledge base, I'm always impressed by everyone. And it doesn't matter who they right. are. I'm impressed by every single one of those justices. I think they're all really, really hyper smart people, hyper achievers, right? These are people who, you know, you don't want me on that court, right? I'm a fucking lazy fuck. I would be terrible <laughs> at that job. Fuck. I would be terrible That's at that fucking job. That's the last word I would describe. But seriously, but yes, though, yeah. I would be a terrible fucking justice. I wouldn't be able to do the job that they do. I recognize the difficulty of that job and the amount of intellect it would take to do that job yeah. well. Or even do that job poorly, the amount of intellect it would take. No, I do too, yeah. It's, it looks... How the fuck do you get so bamboozled by Trump? I know. That you're putting this... What, what is happening, Right. And I, it, I, I just don't, I, I can't, it's hard for me to explain it. I just can't explain it. I, I can't either. It's, it's, it's baffling and embarrassing. Yeah. And we're at a place where you have just, I think, really clear political actors in the Supreme Court, like yeah. just as sitting justices, you have what is just very obvious grift and bribery going on with Clarence Thomas and yeah, with and Samuel Alito. Alito. Like it's really not subtle. Yeah. It's just, it's just like out in the open. It's embarrassing and shameful. And like it's it's every this is a scandal. Yeah. It's an outrage. And, and there's it's just there's, there's nothing we can do. There's nobody that that is willing to take up the mantle to go after them. In order to get them out of there, it would take too many votes. You'll never be able yeah. to impeach them. The best you could probably do is get them in front of you, right? Get them to a hearing. Right. That's the best that you could hopefully do. But you'll never be able to do it while the Republicans have the House. So you'll never be able to do something yeah. like well, that. Well, because then. they, yeah. The Republicans want them there because they're shills for yeah. them. Yeah. And so you're in a you're in a situation now where you can't even get them out to have a to ask a question. They they can't even do that. The person who has, I think, some some power over them or at least could exercise and make their life a little more difficult is Dick Durbin, our senator, mm. because he's the, the chair of the Judicial Committee. But he's even come out and said, I'm not, I, I, I want him to recuse himself. Clearly he's biased, but I, I, I'm not going to do anything about it. Like I, what I will, the fuck? I will ask him, but like, that's all he's, he's not going to do any kind of hearings or any of that stuff. He doesn't. No. And, and there's a possibility that that's because, you know, again, I talked about this on the other show that I do, but there's a possibility that he's doing it because he recognizes that it's a bad pop, bad political decision to do something like that makes us look makes the Democrats look petty or something. Right. And so he might he might have you know this is a guy a career politician, so maybe Absolutely. he knows what yeah. I don't know. But it certainly feels like we're letting the Supreme Court get away with regulating themselves and basically breaking every rule we thought we had with them. I mean, of all the people in the country that should be part uh, nonpartisan, this is a group of people who should be nonpartisan. They should at least appear it, right? You know, yeah, I, I don't not, expect that yeah. he's not fucking nonpartisan behind closed doors, but but outside in the open? Yeah, man. I mean, into, it, 
it feels so incredibly ballsy to do something as flagrant as fly a flag. Mm -hmm. There's no pretense. Once you do that, there's no pretense as a justice that that's not going to get noticed. And it's, it's such a giant, it's literally a symbol. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, fuck you. He's not going to, why would he recuse himself? He's flying that flag. Yeah. It's not like he got home from work and was like, holy shit. And like ran over to the fucking flagpole and cut that thing down and like brought it back inside. And like ran in and was like, we can't fly a fucking upside down flag. I don't care how mad you are at the Joneses. Like that's not what happened. He's doing this because he knows he can get away with it. So there's not going to be a recusal because he already is like, fuck the system. Yeah, of course. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this week. As we said last week, there's a patron show coming out. So if you want to jump on that patron show, we'd love to have you as a patron. We'd love it if you would join our Patreon so you can get free shows like an entire show just for patrons. Uh, you can check it out at dissonancepod.com or patreon.com slash dissonancepod. You can become a patron on a per episode basis. You get a ton of extra stuff every month and you get early shows every single time. So if you're interested in that and interested in supporting people who work for this show, like me and Ian and Sarah, uh, please become a patron. Uh, we'd love to see you uh, join. All right. That's going to wrap it up for this week. We're going to leave it like we always do with the Skeptic's Creed. Credulity is not a virtue. It's fortune cookie cutter, mommy issue, hypno Babylon bullshit. Couched in scientician, double bubble, toil and trouble, pseudo quasi alternative, acupunctuating, pressurized, stereogram, pyramidal, free energy, healing, water, downward spiral, brain dead pan, sales pitch, late night info docutainment. Leo Pisces, cancer cures, detox, reflex, foot massage, death and towers, tarot cars, psychic healing, crystal balls, Bigfoot, Yeti, aliens, churches, mosques and synagogues, temples, dragons, giant worms, Atlantis, dolphins, truthers, birthers, witches, wizards, to the nuts, the bridge mix, the bridge mix, fool, shaman healers, evangelists, conspiracy, double speak, stigmata, nonsense. Expose your signs. Thrust your hands. Bloody, evidential, conclusive. Doubt even this. The opinions and information provided on this podcast are intended for entertainment purposes only. All opinions are solely that of Glory Hole Studios, LLC. Cognitive dissonance makes no representations as to accuracy, completeness, currentness, suitability, or validity of any information and will not be liable for any errors, damages, or butthurt arising from consumption. All information is provided on an as-is basis. No refunds. Produced in association with the local Dairy Council and viewers like you.